here is uh, wintertime and so impact on spring European climate. Uh, mostly these results are obtained in collaborations with uh, my dear colleagues, one of them are here, and many thanks goes to them as well, to the Franco Molteni, because I used Speedy as my main tool to investigate ENSO impact on European climate. So my talk, uh, outline of my talk is like this. First, in the introduction part, I will explain you some winter ENSO forcing and our results about uh, winter time ENSO impact on European climate. Then I, I will explain your motivation to study that uh, time lag, the winter time ENSO to springtime European climate uh, study. I will explain you shortly experimental design and also results uh, about delayed and so impact and as conclusion I will provide you some kind of physical mechanism of uh, that delayed and so impact. So we know that tropical oceans are strong generator of climate variability all over the world. I'm particularly interested in SST anomalies in tropical Pacific and in ASO phases both La Nina and El Nino and uh, their impact on European climate variability. On this picture, we may see El Nino precipitation impact over the globe. And you see that the impact over the sun region in the world is quite clear, particularly over the Pacific North American pattern, over the Australia. But if you look at the European uh, region, there is quite weak uh, signal. It is not easy to uh, extract ENSO signal uh, from the other influences over that uh, part of the world. We know that uh, North Atlantic European region is associated with large interannual, um, which, uh, with a, a large uh, internal variability of the atmosphere. And there is also some other phenomena that might even have a stronger impact on European climate, like we know that North Atlantic oscillation uh, has a strong impact uh, on this area. Uh, tropical Pacific, particularly uh, Nino 3.4 uh, region, is quite uh, away from the Europe. And uh, interactions with regional seasonal cycle, chaotic properties, complexity of a lot of feedbacks, they may mask uh, and so impact uh, over the Europe. But what we did uh, in our experiment, one of the first experiments was to create a large ensemble of speed simulations. It was quite long simulations, and we tried to isolate ENSO signal over the northern uh, hemisphere. Here you may see the composites for La Nina and uh, El Nino uh, events for 100 hectopascals of potential high. And you see that the response of the Pacific North American region is quite strong. What is also the truth for the model is that the signal is, is symmetric, which means that uh, action centers over the PNA region for La Nina and El Nino are posed over the more or less over the, the similar places, which may not be the truth for the observations. But that, that was what we got with Speedy. Also, what we obtained for PNA region that the, the, the strength of the uh, response is proportional to the strength of the forcing. If you look over the Europe, you may see that there is a quite weak uh, signal over the, mainly over the North Atlantic. But at least we obtained that the, for El Nino there is a, a decreased anomalies and for La Nina increased anomalies which is in quite good correspondence with some other studies, both modeling and, um, and observational studies, and it is, which is also in line with, um, uh, with the results of Frederick and Miller, who obtained that for the European climate, uh, El Nino events are related more to cyclonic type of weather, uh, and opposite for uh, La Nina. So our speed gives more or less uh, good results even over the Europe. So what was the motivation to analyze time delay tensile impact over the Europe? First, we obtained that uh, concurrent uh, ENSO impact was uh, obtained in many modeling and uh, observational studies, but there are also some studies that were indicated some time delay tensile impact, 
and uh, that spring precipitation anomaly sometimes is even stronger than wintertime spring precipitation anomaly associated with ENSO. Then there were some quite big progress in understanding of uh, observed and modeled ENSO impact uh, have been made. And also uh, dynamical ENSO predictions have been improved. So if we found some correlation between uh, wintertime ENSO and springtime response over the Europe, that might have an impact on seasonal predictions, hopefully. Uh, so, um, what we made. Experimental design, we used uh, observational data for precipitation is climate research unit, crew data, and then sea level pressure uh, from Hadley Center, and we need SSTs and CIS climatology as, a forcing, as input forcing for a speedy model. Uh, modeled data, we performed few several targeted experiments. One of them is control experiment, which is based on 20 mem member ensemble of speed simulations, forced with observed globally prescribed SSD uh, in global oceans. Then we have mixed experiment, which is um, which means that we have uh, SSD forcing in uh, tropical Indian and tropical Pacific Ocean. But also, we, pre we prescribed the slab ocean layer in North Atlantic to allow um, air sea interaction over that uh, part. After that, we have mixed winter ends, so which is the same, which is the similar experiment like this one, but uh, we limited SST forcing uh, to the winter season, which is more or less extended winter from October to March. And also mixed summer ends experiment with SST forcing prescribed uh, in only during the summer part of the year. And here we, there are some of results over the North Atlantic European region. So first we may see that during the GFM season, which is winter season, uh, we have uh, La Nina and El Nino um, a response which is quite similar to that what Frederick and Miller obtained based on their observational study. Um, and uh, for La Nina, there is the increased mean sea level pressure and during El Nino it is decreased, which is more or less a cyclonic type of weather. Precipitation anomalies are in quite good accordance with mean sea level pressure as they should be. So we have increased precipitation during El Nino uh, years over the southern part of the Europe, while well, the, the, the strongest signal is over the uh, Atlantic. The signal is quite um, symmetrical, but what we obtained over the Europe is that uh, the, the amplitude of the response doesn't uh, uh, depend on the amplitude of the forcing. Because when we try to do composites based on a strong uh, ENSO events and moderate ENSO events, we didn't get much difference in amplitude of the response. Uh, so, obviously, in, at least in speedy and in observation, we have uh, concurrent uh, ENSO influence on North Atlantic European region. So the question is, is it possible that wintertime ENSO has an impact on uh, springtime climate over the Europe? Um, here you have, may see the first EOF of uh, AMJ precipitation for crew and for control experiment with speedy. They are quite similar and we see that there is increased variability of the AMJ precipitation over uh, the southern parts of uh, Europe. Uh, so our question is how tropical Pacific SST uh, um, influences AMAJ uh, precipitation over this part uh, of the world. It could be done by contemporaneous impact, which means that springtime uh, SSTs in tropical Pacific forces somehow uh, springtime uh, precipitation. There is also the possibility of time delayed, which means that wintertime ENSO has an impact on uh, springtime precipitation over the Europe. So, what we did to try to investigate if that delayed uh, impact is possible. We calculated the correlation between the PC1 of MAJ precipitation, which is actually the measure of uh, springtime variability of uh, precipitation over the Europe, with SSTs all over the world. 
And in tropical Pacific, we obtain the signal which projects uh, on uh, ENSO, uh, ENSO pattern. So uh, this is the true for the crew data, but also for the control experiment with Speedy. Uh, there is the MAJ to JFM correlation, and this is the contemporaneous correlation. You see that springtime uh, variability of uh, uh, of precipitation over the Europe is uh, strongly connected to uh, wintertime uh, state of SSPs in tropical Pacific, but is not the true for the springtime, which means that the tropical Pacific during the winter has stronger impact than the, than the springtime uh, conditions in tropical Pacific. Excuse me, uh, the correlation value is about, uh, it is go by 1.1. Uh, so here is uh, 1.4, but they are statistically significant because we have quite a long time period. It is up to 1.4. The contour lines is 1.0.1, yes, 0.1 and... Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, this one. Oh, even, you think it could might be good be okay. Could be, could be. We just need to turn it off to check. So obviously we have contemporaneous and delayed uh, and so impact on precipitation over the Europe. So to focus only to one of them, we performed the, the winter and summer uh, experiments. So in winter uh, uh, experiment, we allowed only delayed and so impact, and in summer experiment, we allowed only contemporaneous spring to spring um, impact. And what we obtained is presented here for summer ENSO. There you may see that precipitation is uh, decreased over the central part of, of the Europe, while in winter ENSO uh, experiment, we have the more or less continuous band of increased precipitation over the Europe. If you look at the crew precipitation, there are more similarity between this one and this one. The same is true for the control experiment, which gives us an indication that uh, for more similar ENSO uh, response, we need uh, wintertime ENSO forcing in the tropical Pacific. So, what is about the physical mechanism of that time delayed? Obviously, we obtained quite similar results between crew and mixed winter and so, uh, uh, mixed winter and so experiment. If we compare mixed winter and mixed summer uh, experiment, then we can conclude that seasonal persistence of ENSO is not the key factor for uh, that delayed uh, impact. Rosby wave propagation mechanism, we cannot explain that because we know Rosby waves are quite quick, quickly come to, to, the, to the Europe. So we need some intermediate physical mechanism. So we need some slower component of the climate system to allow that uh, to, to that uh, connection. And what we uh, focused on is the role of North Atlantic. So what we have in our experiments, so mixed winter experiments on the first the left uh, panel, you may see SSTs obtained in slab ocean layer. Obviously, there are some SST anomaly pattern, uh, which is also obtained in, in, in the experiment when we have the, 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 the SST forcing during the whole year. And that SST pattern is um, quite in accordance with a pattern of temperature, a surface temperature, 
and also with the patterns of the temperature on higher levels. So you can see here that at 850 hectopascals, the pattern, the temperature pattern is something like here. Mean sea level pressure response to that pattern is uh, in that way that we have decreased uh, sea level pressure over the North Atlantic and just a little part of Western Europe. But as the as the consequence of such uh, mean sea level pressure response, we have increased uh, pressure gradient and also increased zonal wind in this uh, area. Increased zonal wind in this area means that there will be uh, also the increased advection from the ocean to the land. And as a result, we obtain increased precipitation over that part uh, of the Europe. So there's the physical mechanism that explains uh, what's going on uh, in our experiments. But there is also the question, what's going on at the same time in the speedy stratosphere? We all know that stratosphere is important part uh, in uh, tropical, extratropical teleconnections. So we look at the speedy stratosphere. Actually, speedy doesn't have a real stratosphere, but at least it has some upper parts of troposphere. And for zonal wind, um, there are uh, some composites uh, for El Nino minus La Nina events. And for the zonal winds, we obtained that uh, response projects on the, on the northern annular mode. Uh, for in, uh, in January, February, March, and April. So that pattern persisted quite long. Uh, the same, we also looked for the temperature. So the temperature response is associated with uh, stratospheric warming uh, during El Nino uh, events. So polar stratosphere warms during El Nino and cools during La Nina events. There's a slow stratosphere warming, no sudden No sudden, no, no. <laughs> They're only monthly means, so. Uh, after that, we just defined some uh, indexes that may measure the, the strength of this uh, pattern and also the strength of this warming. And what we obtained for the experiment where there is no slab ocean layer, you may see that there is some signal in the stratosphere, which is persistent. There is also the signal uh, at the surface. The same is true for the zonal wind. We, we, have, we see the, the stratospheric response, but also the response uh, over the surface. But if we include slab, slab ocean layer in North Atlantic, then these surface anomalies last longer than in the experiments where there is no slab ocean uh, layer, which means that really something comes from the North Atlantic Ocean. We have um, uh, signal persistence in the stratosphere, but also uh, also uh, something from the from the interaction between the North Atlantic and atmosphere. To check if that is really true, we also made another idealized experiment uh, with SST force with SST force in put in tropical Pacific uh, due from January to mid February, and after that it was decreased and in March was zero. There was no mixed layer. This experiment was supposed just to check what is going on in in speedy stratosphere, and we obtained that. We really may see some uh, the stratospheric warming associated with SST forcing in tropical Pacific. This is also the true for the wind. And we calculated a daily meridional heat flux anomaly and obtained that this increased uh, incoming uh, heat uh, flux preceded to the strongest polar warming. So the maximum is somewhere here in February. And then the, 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 the warming, the maximum warming is somewhere in the middle of March or a little bit later. So even Speedy has quite simple stratosphere. It also contributes uh, to that uh, time delayed uh, connection between tropical Pacific and North Atlantic European region. So as a conclusion, I can provide you this sketch about uh, mechanism. First, we, what we have, we have tropical Pacific forcing, and through the sea air interaction, we have uh, tropical atmosphere response. And uh, by Rossby wave train and uh, with the contribution of stratosphere, 
we also have some response in mid-latitude atmosphere due to Earth interaction. Uh, there is a C anomaly, uh, SST anomaly pattern in North Atlantic, which can uh, persist for some longer time. And, after, uh, and due to that uh, SST pattern, we also have uh, increased zonal wind and uh, atmospheric response, which is uh, here found as increased precipitation over the ocean and over the, this part of the Europe during the spring. So, thank you very much.